<laughs> I love it. That that leather is making fart sounds. It's great. <laughs> but, uh, do, do, you're going to give Shan. Shan's going to uh, tell me I can't have my seat anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no. I promised him he wouldn't make noises. <laughs> <laughs> right okay let's let's, let's do this <laughs> all right let's start it was the only reason he let me have the chair was because i was like no he doesn't make any have noises you been, have you been a smoking before <laughs> no i'm just i'm just a giddy boy look at me look how comfortable i am of course i'm excited um all right let's let's do it <laughs> Welcome to the Nordic Mythology Podcast. I'm Daniel Farron, co-owner of the company Horns of Odin, and I'm joined, as always, by Dr. Matthias Nordvig. Hello, everybody. This time we're joined by VC Bloodax from Say the Bloat. He's a, both a musician and a instrument builder as well. So welcome to the show. Hello. I'm really glad to be here. I've been listening to the podcast many times. And yeah, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you both. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to to join us. Um, yeah, we've had this one booked in for, for a little while. Yeah, it has been booked for a while. Yeah. And yeah, let's have a chat and talk. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Let's um, see where we go. I'm in my my new little studio room. It's not quite finished just yet, but it's it's getting there. So I, I probably sound different again from last week for, for the audio listeners. So, um, yeah, just bear with us whilst we, we change these things. Again, Matthias is going to be changing his setup over the next couple of weeks as well. So our voices may change a little bit, but hopefully for the for the better in the long run. It looks good. I wanted to do the, the meeting in my workshop, but I don't have internet connection there. I don't have Wi-Fi. So, yeah, yeah. no, that would have been, been good. Um, Hamish did it in his... He picked his leather workshop and that was amazing. It looked, you know, he had some really cool stuff. Yeah, workshop is always better than a house, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, let's start, what have you guys been up to? Um, I've spent my week changing my old horn carving workshop into the new podcast studio. And that's pretty much all me and Sarah have done. So if you want to see what it looks like, you know, you can watch the videos on YouTube um so yeah who have you two been up to anything exciting um well, busy you, you go first i've been fishing this morning <laughs> yeah doing nice. some pike fishing and it was really productive got six pike oh nice so it was really nice just around the corner from where i live and i haven't done anything music related because i got a bit frustrated on the weekend we had a recording session and the software failed, so we couldn't finish and we couldn't uh, achieve what we wanted. So I kind of left it on one side for a few days. Sometimes that's the best thing to do. You can you can get too frustrated just chasing something that's going wrong and it can just uh, tear you apart. Sometimes you're better just to walk away and, and come back in a, yes. in a few days. Definitely, yeah, and especially I like going fishing or going to the woods, and it's like disconnecting, not being looking at my phone all the time, not just being on my own. Mm -hmm. So, it's... Mm -hmm. do you go? Do you go fishing on your own? Yeah, oh, I'd I'd love to. I've never been fishing, never been fishing, and I I, I wish I'd have a friend of mine who goes on his own and he'll just go on a Friday night, take his ten. Put, you know, find a pitch next to the next to the liver, liver river or lake, and um, and yeah, just fish for the weekend. And it seems never like, been fishing, never, never. Wow. I know. I, I mean, this this might sound really sad, but I didn't have like a dad around to to take me fishing. So neither did I, but I, I managed to do it anyway. <laughs> no, no. Well, I guess none of my friends went. So maybe you, just... need, you need to spend less money on microphones and buy a fishing rod. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's it. Evil. <laughs> yeah that could be it i mean i imagine fishing rods aren't cheap i could make one though just from a stick and some string that's probably what i tried to do there you go <laughs> old schooling it yeah I, I know you will have been fishing before Mateus. yes yes i am um, i started very young in the uh, 
Arctic seas in Greenland. So yeah. <laughs> so have you been Arctic fishing where they just cut a little hole in the ice and? Um, no, we we did mostly just uh, summer fishing up there. Um, oh, okay. But you know what? I have had the pleasure of cleaning so much yarn from from uh, seaweed and that kind of stuff. It's probably one of the most boring things you can ever do. <laughs> what kind of fish you got uh, in Greenland? Salmon? Um, yeah, trout. Um, that would be the main ones that we were fishing and, and cod as well. And then uh, Arctic char as well. Um, I don't remember what they're called in English, these deep sea fish that they also fish for. They're like red and um, you, you have to use a, um, a weight. So at the traditional Inuit um, a, a fishing poles or whatever you call them, uh, they look like an anchor. It's like a stone with, um, and then the, the bottom part is made out of antlers from reindeer. And then they have hooks on the sides and then you like lower them really deep into the sea. And then um, when you bring them back up, these fish they, that have been hooked on them, they, their heads, they pop a little bit because of the, the pressure. So, so their eyes are like popped out like that. Oh. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> How big are these fish if you're using reindeer antlers? Well, they're, you know, I don't know, like foot long or something like that. Oh, it's been nice. a while since I did it so I'm, I'm like <laughs> I, I can't actually remember well how big they are but that'll you know be, also fishing for catfish and that kind of stuff yeah yeah that'd be interesting mm. to do doing some arctic fishing never mm -hmm. done that oh I mean if you mentioned catfish fishing all I can think of is noodling have you seen <laughs> have you seen that I don't know what that is oh <laughs> I, I'm sure it's called noodling um <laughs> shan just put in the group chat welcome to the nordic fishing podcast which is what it feels like right now but but noodling i think it's something that they do in the in the south of america um and they go to like the swamps and just stick the forearm in the in the oh, swamp yeah. and then the, the catfish just comes and puts his mouth around I the do. arm yeah and then I do. yeah they put you you just put your fist in as far as you can and grab on yeah, you, pull them you out. Have, you have to grab them from the jaw and pull them out. Yeah, like, I'm sure it's called noodling. I could be, I could have made that up though. I make a lot of things up. I, <laughs> I, I haven't done that neither. No, man. Now I'm wondering if, if, if I actually, if catfish is the right term. I am so bad at uh, bird and fish names um, when it comes to like in English. Mm hmm. Oh, it might be actually a northern wolf fish. Oh, I mean that sounds a little more badass and a little more. Um, it does, doesn't a little it? more Nordic as well. I yeah. don't think I don't think the catfish is very uh, septentrional. Yeah, yeah. But they don't live in ex extremely cold water. No. So I, it, uh, what I meant to say was the wolf fish. Um, because that's exactly the one, at least according to Wikipedia, uh, that I remember from when I was a kid. But I feel like we call that a catfish in Danish. So, oh. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's get into the... the hey, you haven't even heard what I've been doing. Oh, no, I haven't. How rude of me. I just, I just assumed that you'd been fishing. No, I haven't been fishing that lately. <laughs> no, I have, like, this huge pile of wood... Um, out in my yard that I have been needing to to cut for ages, um, you know, for for winter time for for our, um, for a fireplace, and um, of course because I had COVID, it was like really difficult for me. Like uh, not this weekend, but last weekend, I, I I tried to go out and cut, and and I wasn't over the the all the COVID stuff yet, so like I still had like um my lungs were still congested so i got winded just trying to like start the chainsaw <laughs> I, thought he was gonna, I thought he was at least gonna say axe like i, I got tired swinging the axe but not the Dude, i'm not going to i have i have a huge pile of like logs that are you know half my size i'm not gonna cut that with an axe <laughs> <laughs> nobody's gonna cut that with an axe but you'll have to you'll have to split them with an axe 
I, I will have to split them with an axe. Yeah. That is true, but uh, <laughs> but I'm not <laughs> cutting them into like smaller pieces <laughs> with like with an axe. That um, at, le at least you want to use a saw of some kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely. motor driven uh, is more preferable. Okay, anyway, so this this weekend, I, I was I could have seen you and your good lady on on the end each on the end of one of those uh, old school <laughs> saws. With the, with the like, handle, just pushing and pulling, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, that might actually be more efficient because here's what comes next. So this time I actually managed to get out and I'm not getting winded from trying to start my chainsaw anymore. It's perfectly working out fine for about five minutes. And then the whole damn blade fell off. Like the entire thing that holds the chain fell off my goddamn chainsaw. I just bought it. This is what you get for buying German uh, design. Like, <laughs> did you did you put it together? Or it did it come? I I put it back together and it worked for another five minutes and then it fell apart again. And now I'm gonna take it back to the shop and I'm really what, pissed off. What chainsaw do you have? It's a steel chainsaw. Yeah, right? yeah. No, oh, still still usually make really good tools. Yeah, they look <sighs> quite good. I don't know. As a Dane, I don't really trust German design. No, oh, everyone knows that the Germans <laughs> make the best stuff. I used to work with a chainsaw cutting trees, and I still have it. It's still chainsaw. So, I I don't know. I I, I gravitate towards the, the Swedes instead when it comes to you know proper I, motor design. To be honest, I prefer Husvar, Husvarna. Yeah, right. But, <laughs> but I still have a steel. <laughs> I love the way we've just gone deep in deep into fishing and now deep into wood wood cutting. Yeah, you know, deep into chainsaw. The different types of chainsaws that are out there. <laughs> yeah, no, I like the Husqvarna as well. Like um they they're they know what they're doing out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you did you fix the chainsaw in the end? Well, I managed to like get it back to working and all that stuff, but I'm gonna have to take it to the shop anyway because it's you know, a chainsaw that you just bought just shouldn't be falling apart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, and I can't imagine still ones are cheap either. No, they're not. Absolutely not. No. So, yeah. yeah, definitely go and get that. Get that looked at. Yeah, I'm sure in the shop they will give you like a little tutorial how to live it right. <laughs> how to no, not break it. <laughs> no, I no i think it, it, it's actually i think it was the guys tuning it at the at the shop they didn't uh tighten the bolt properly and that that was really what what the issue was here Probably. but yeah. but um yeah now i'm gonna go back and yell at them and uh see what comes out of that <laughs> oh perfect okay should we jump into into the bulk of the yeah, the book of the show. Till let's talk about Vizzy's music. Um, Vizzy, are you able just to pull the microphone a little closer to yourself? Shan's just whispered in my ear lovingly to uh, ask if any, you could do that. Any better from them? Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So yeah, let's um, yeah, let's talk about your music. You are, I guess, are you the 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 lead man? Is would you call that in say the blot? I, I like to think that we all uh, give the band like a very important part mm -hmm. but in terms of I yeah normally I am the, the one who write the songs um, and also the one who kind of started the project and started looking for people and well I think we all three are quite equal in the band Mm -hmm. Even if I'm more like the frontman, would say, but <laughs> that's very gracious of you. Because if it was me, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm the frontman." <laughs> <laughs> that's what he does with the podcast. <laughs> no, no, it's I my do podcast. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> oh, that's true. It's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to treat them well. If not, they leave me. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. that, that. Trust me, that's what I'm doing with Mateus. <laughs> I'm nothing without him. Yeah, it's, it's not easy to find quality people around. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, yeah, so have you, I guess, do you do much on your own? Is it all a part of, say, the block? Well, I also play a lot myself, and I have, as, as well as writing song for, say, the block, I also 
write songs for myself that I want to release at some point. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm also a member of another two bands that we are not very active. Okay. And, and they are metal, so quite mm -hmm. brutal metal. But yeah, I I'm always trying to be involved in music one or other way. Mm -hmm. There's that there's that link between metal and Nordic music again. I think we, we we touched on that for the last couple of weeks. It seems to be something that's very much amalgamated the, yeah. the two. Yeah, I don't really know why, but yeah, normally people who like metal like kind of this kind of mm -hmm. music. You That's also, really it, it, sometimes that Nordic style music, whatever we want to call it, is like classified as metal too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. So, yeah. It's, I, guess, well, I assume it, it must be called Viking metal quite often. One uh, Viking metal, I think, is more ha is a distinct genre, but uh, okay. but you definitely see like bands like Wardruna and Heilung, uh, they typically like end up in some kind of like metal category in in like magazines and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. I've seen that at least. So yeah, I can relate. For example, one of the festivals we played this summer, it was Blostock, mm -hmm. which is a pure metal festival in the UK. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um we were the only band who were in metal really so. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i guess where else do you put where else do you put bands like you other than at a, a, a festival like something like midgas block which is aimed at this type of music what else where else do you put yeah there, there where, are other other festivals around europe that they are more focused on folk music. Mm -hmm. So that would be really our next step, trying mm -hmm. to join a few of those festivals. Wow. In, a, in a way, it's, it's, it's also, I guess, it belongs to that old classification of like world music, right? World music is, is a genre of... Um, traditional type music that has then been turned into pop music kind of mm -hmm. sound yeah, yeah. and been been made available to everybody yeah but um, you look do you look into world music and you find like traditional african music south american or asian so it's a bit vague mm, yeah exactly mm -hmm. really I mean, do do world music festivals exist where it's because I think that would be a, a brilliant thing to go to where you get music from like from Africa, from South America, from definitely, Scandinavia. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know one because I, me and well, the band were approached before the COVID for going to China to one of these festivals. Oh, wow. Where they wanted to have music from all these styles. Let's mm -hmm. call it like world music. And yeah, they were, well, it didn't happen in the end, but it was going to be a lot of artists in what you would say, world music. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be uh, would be a lot of fun. I don't think I could make the trip to China, though. <laughs> It'd be a little <laughs> bit far. I mean, that, yeah, it sounds like it would just be a, a really an amazing experience to see all this different music from uh, all over the world. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I mean, hopefully that that comes to fruition and they uh, put put something like that together and you get to go because that would I imagine that would be an amazing experience for you guys as a band. Yeah, that would have been really really good, and also because it wasn't the typical festival or typical gig, it was going to be everything outside, in different stages that they put around. I think they said it was like a massive park. So you were walking through the park and seeing different kind of music mm -hmm. um, being played. Cool. Where in China was that going to be? I can't remember the name. I would, I would need to look for the name of the city. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, one C, one Sao, something like that. Okay. I think it was starting with one. Guangzhou. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I trust you to know something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't 
I, I, I could probably this. I'm so ignorant to uh, the the Far East. I guess like I could probably name like three places in China, and one of them <laughs> is because he was on the on the news a hell of a lot last year. Oh, <laughs> you, you know where Wuhan is. And, I, see. Uh, okay. <laughs> I still wouldn't be able to point it out on a map. Okay, <laughs> I've heard of it though. <laughs> Um, I think they have very nice wild restaurants over there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess what have you guys been up to in the uh, in the last year? It it must have been a difficult one. Have you? Uh, do you all live in the UK where you can still get together and? Yeah, we all live in the UK. We are pretty local. I mean, like one hour away from each other, mm-hmm. more or less one hour, one hour and a half. So we do rehearsals in person in my workshop. That is like workshop, rehearsal room, recording room, everything in one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the COVID year has been like a year lost. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that you've got more time to, to get together and play? Or I guess, I guess when it first started, you would have had to, to all stay away from each other. I'm thinking maybe if... If, if you had day jobs outside of the music, if you're on furlough, it frees up some some time to be able to maybe get in the in the studio and play together. Yes, uh, when I've been on furlough for a few months, but those months were like the strict mm-hmm. um, lockdown. So we yeah. didn't meet anyway. And then after I've been working in my day job, so really didn't make much difference i feel like i feel like those months where we were all on strict lockdown um was such a fucking waste of time can i say that now because yes. like like nowadays like you got covid rampantly all over the place and i mean i just had it and uh, like it, everybody in the u.s is getting it now and, and nobody's on lockdown nobody's worrying about anything and it's just <laughs> yeah like why, it, why was i sitting on my ass for three months not doing anything <laughs> the, the whole thing's just insane now i think we we went to uh we ventured into ikea the other day to to pick up some bits for the the new uh studio <laughs> and uh the lady came on the tannoy it was like an automated message saying that um i think it was like following government advice that it is expected and advised that you wear masks in the in their stores, and I looked around and I don't think there was a single person in there in a mask. And no, you, for, for we like have the I, same here, we, we have an order to wear masks everywhere. Yeah, for like a few Nobody's days really after, for a few days after when they released, when they kind of said you don't have to wear masks anymore, or at least when they, it came out that it was your free choice. For maybe a week, everybody kept them on, and then after that, everyone was like, no. Nah. But you still, you still can see some people wearing their their mask even outside. Mm-hmm. I was, yeah, I was picking yeah, my, my that, daughter yeah. from the school today, and another little girl was walking outside with a mask. Mm. So some people are still doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the whole the whole um, the whole situation is crazy. I don't know where it's going. I don't know where it ends. Um, yeah, but definitely has been like a gr or more than a gr lost yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it definitely has yeah i I got the feeling yeah it's been locked down and furlough i'm gonna do many things but i didn't end doing as much as i wanted (laughs) Um, hopefully you got uh, by the way speaking of ikea i i had a great experience i just have to throw this in here because um it was so horrible i bought this this festive uh, Christmas drink thing that they had in Ikea. Turns out it's uh, just Swedish Yulmust, uh, which is like this, uh, a, it's a um, malt hops kind of mixture thing. And it tastes like ass. It's <laughs> so horrible. <laughs> Oh no, that's so disappointing when you get a drink and you you're hoping it's gonna be nice. Well, there are like, some versions of it that taste great. I mean, I just the, the, this IKEA stuff is just so bad. <laughs> you like Swedish chainsaws and not Swedish drinks. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more into the Icelandic malt, um, which you also get in Denmark. It's just in Denmark, it's just called Christmas beer. Um, it's, it's like, a, a, I guess it's what you what basically do is that you take the leftovers of brewing beer um, and uh, there's not a lot of alcohol in it. And uh, then you uh, add caramel and, and sugar, and then you have like a nice um, drink for kids. And it's, it's wonderful. With a, with a tiny bit of alcohol, yeah. With a tiny bit of alcohol, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to add a sneak a little bit in there. Of course. <laughs> so busy, um, where, I guess, where do your inspirations come from? For the music it, this this whole scene and genre seems to have blown up and we you know we spoke about it quite a few times on the podcast before with different artists that you know in the last five years it's just got bigger and bigger and bigger exploded definitely mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah it's more bands more bands and everywhere you look on instagram or youtube you see new bands coming from nowhere where you didn't hear any from them before and then all of a sudden it's a music video but it's in a way it's great you know the more people are interested in the music is better mm -hmm. but I, i'm i'm worried the scene is going to be a bit oversaturated soon mm -hmm. and that wouldn't be great neither because i think when a genre of music reaches that point keep it up there normally goes downhill mm -hmm. yeah i mean um i i I'm a, i'm a bit more optimistic i think i think there's still a long way to go before before you're going to see a, a collapse um hopefully what also happens is that you know it spreads out to more audiences and that's something I just saw Heilong here in um, uh, in uh, in Colorado at, at Red Rocks, and I noticed that the um, the audience was quite diverse. There was like a lot of different types of people who seemed to be into this. So hopefully, that's you know just going to develop yeah, even further. That is something that I've noticed as well, because as we spoke before, these kind of bands are quite related to metal so i think to begin with the the audience is only metal mm -hmm. at you know up to some point and yeah the more bands the more you can reach to the general public let's call it like that so yeah as you say it's still a long way to go mm -hmm. the, the explosion of these bands is yeah as you say only happens in like five years Yes, mm -hmm. still more years of growing for sure. And well, let's see what happens. Really. Yeah, <laughs> let, I, I think it's always there's always new people get involved in in this kind of um, in this stuff. And I think also you don't even have to be massively into Vikings or deep dive into like Nordic mythology to to go and see High Lung. At a concert and, and enjoy it. It's I think it's an experience for as much as it is for somebody like me that's interested in this. But if I took a friend of mine that's not necessarily interested in this this world, they're still going to have as good a time, and it's still going to be an experience, something that they've never seen before. And it's it's entertaining in its own right. It's not, you know, it, it's kind of universal in in that fact. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, is that's a good point. Because maybe that people that doesn't know a lot or probably nothing about uh, Nordic mythology, they probably can see it with completely different eyes or different ears to listening to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think it's gonna keep keep growing for a little bit. It doesn't yeah. seem to be doesn't seem to be slowing down anyway. Um, people that is into uh, like Viking culture and Nordic mythology, they expect something from this kind of bands because they have some reference points. Like they have mm -hmm. Wardruna, they have Heilung and a few more bands. But people that is coming 
from new, they get like they don't expect you to sound like Wardruna or they don't expect you to sound like Hylum and they just get it raw from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good that's a good point. I guess do you do you get that feeling of people who always compare you to Wardruna and Hylum? Because then those two are, are unarguably the I guess the pinnacle of of this genre. So yeah. you must always have that conscious or that thought in your mind that people will be comparing you. And I guess aside from that, you have to then try and separate yourself away from it. Yes, yes. I, I mean, uh, I I can't deny that Wardruna and Hylum are a big influence to me. Oh, of course. Because they, are, they both are great. And uh, the the reason why I got interested in Tuggle Harper many years ago is because I, I've listened first Wardruna's album. Mm. I I still remember that exact moment where I was, what I was doing, that I put that album that a friend recommended me and say, oh, have you listened what these two guys have done from Gorgoroth? And you say, oh, let's give it a listen. So, yeah. I, I, that's so funny. I, I just had a flashback to back when Hilo, uh, sorry, Wadruna hadn't really become a thing internationally at all. And I remember that they were just like some local Norwegian band that was playing in places in Denmark and, and elsewhere in Scandinavia. Yeah, exactly. I remember watching the first Wadruna videos of their gigs. They were mm-hmm. small, you know, like very. Uh, familiar mm-hmm. uh, very close to the public and um, yeah definitely the first time i've listened that tuggle harper i was thinking what is this out of tune violin sounding here what is this <laughs> <laughs> what is this this thing but i couldn't stop listening to it so yeah that's that is a big influence to me um yeah i I've been told, we've been told that, oh yeah, that band sounds like Wardruna. Of course, we we use a Tuggle Harpa, they use a Tuggle Harpa. That is a very characteristic, characteristic sound. So it's going to sound like 100%, mm. you know. So what 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 do you do to 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 create sort of your your own sound and your own feeling? Um, because I mean, obviously, people are saying, "Oh, yeah, these bands sound alike," and so on. But, but, but are there, are there specific things to, where you try to like dis- to really make sure that people would be able to distinguish you? We do a lot of throat singing, us three in the band. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we started, uh, all only me was doing throat singing, but the other two guys were Tom and John. They were joining, joining, joining until they, they're good now mm-hmm. doing throat singing. So we all can do throat singing. Um, vocal harmonies. And also one thing that we are trying to stick to is we only play on stage whatever we can play. Okay. With our, our instruments, with our hands, sing. So we don't use any backing track or anything. Mm-hmm. All you can listen in our gigs is what we're playing. Mm. Uh, I'd like that. And I, that, I, I think that's quite distinctive in this kind of music because mostly all the bands they use drones to delay in the background or recorded parts. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so yeah. funny. I, I feel like you get like these two, like polar opposites like you either have very low tech or very high tech kind yeah. of in, in this, uh, in this yeah. genre yeah we try to play a gig like if we were playing around the bonfire mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah no I, I i i do like that um because you can always kind of dis- especially live you can always distinguish the live instruments from the like I guess it's not an electronic backing track, but, but what's not being played live. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's definitely, yeah, I, I, 
I like that you do that. It is something that's a little bit different. And just to go back to your point before about, or oh, I can't remember if it was you that said, Mateus, about people will, will always compare the two. And or it's, it, I guess with this, with with a genre like this, that, that there's not that many bands and people don't necessarily have the, the most trained ear to it, something that maybe they put on once every couple of weeks as part of whatever else they're listening to. Or if you get new people interested in this that haven't listened to that much of this kind of quote Nordic music, that until you train your ear, everything does sound it's very samey. No matter even if it's not, I, I you know I have friends who I listen to quite a lot of hip hop, like and British grime, that kind of stuff. And to, to people who don't listen to it, they just kind of go, What? That all sounds the same. I can't understand what they're saying. It's all exactly the same. But it's it's not until you you know you spend the time listening to it that you then gather an ear for it and then and understand the differences. You can hear the slight and subtle differences. So I think no matter what in in this genre, anybody who does something like this, people automatically will go, "Oh, well, that just sounds like Wardruno. Well, that sounds like High Long." I, I don't think there's anything anybody can necessarily do to escape from that. Yeah, yeah, but well, is is what it is really i mean in after playing blostock we got a review we got uh, a few reviews and all of them were really good but it was one review that said exactly that we copied one song from wardruna note by note <laughs> and it's like uh, no it's impossible <laughs> but <laughs> mainly because we are in a different tuning, you know, and but it was a song that is all throat singing. So I get the people associated, but it doesn't look very good when that's a pretty bad reviewer who would say that. Yeah, well, but they also say that uh, uh, how it how they say. Um, that we were from the not very Viking town of Reading. Oh. And, oh, okay. And my fake Viking accent was part of my persona. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> what a jerk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he didn't want to like you from the start, did he? <laughs> Sounds like <Yeah>. it. <laughs> but yeah. Sorry, give me one second. I'm going to connect my laptop to the to the power. Just no worries. Two seconds. No problem. Yeah, that that sounds like a a shitty reviewer. You can't you can't just say that. It's just you don't know know somebody or know. That. But again, you know, Bloodstock is a metal festival, so I guess what they'll have done is it will be a metal reviewer who who doesn't have that ear for this kind of music, and they will just go, okay, they yes. sound like Wadruna. It must just be. A carbon copy when in fact you know there there are differences yeah to be to be honest we've been laughing a lot with that review that's what you've <laughs> got to do that's what we do on here we if don't we... take it we don't take it as bad because it's obviously coming from someone who doesn't really know a lot about it mm -hmm. you know i can take a bad review mm -hmm. as as much as a good review because you learn from all of them Oh, I've, yeah. when when someone uh, doesn't have a clue what it's talking about you better have a laugh about mm -hmm. it and don't take no, it I, yeah especially a review a review like that where they quite clearly were just out to to be shitty from the, the offset I guess it's it's much easier to dismiss than maybe someone who was really clued up and then picked picked everything apart bit by bit that one might be a little bit harder to uh to deal with because i'm i'm a sucker with reviews and most of ours are people just especially on the podcast people are just calling us well we either get called far right or liberal or, or extremely left i don't know we get called everything um <laughs> so most of the time it's easy for us to just dismiss and be like what what you want about <laughs> well i guess you you have to uh, pass on those things no not giving a yeah. shit really yeah <laughs> uh, you can't you can't dwell on them you can just talk about them on the podcast and ridicule them <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that that was a, a funny review yeah especially no, because i i obviously have an accent 
but I'm not faking it. This is my accent. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean that's uh, that would be a commit if it were if you were faking it, it would be a commitment. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you've you've committed to something there, and you've got to just go along with it. <laughs> Yeah. I, 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 I couldn't do it if I tried to fit. I mean, I can just about do my own accent, let alone try and do another accent. I, I would break my my Yorkshire accent would just come out within seconds. Well, you, you can't avoid it. Is is your natural accent? You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Okay. So, other than other than being in, in say the blood, you you make instruments. I mean. Where did that come from? Because you make some really, some really beautiful stuff. Um, I would love to own a piece and get a piece behind me in the in the new studio. Wink, wink. Um, <laughs> no, so yeah. W- at what point did you did you go down that route? Was it did you make the instruments first and then get into the music, or was it you did the music first and then you wanted an instrument? Because was- I know Vargs when we had Varg on from uh, Volospa, he just made an in- made one because. It was he needed one, he couldn't afford one, so he built it for himself, and, and that was it. But you obviously sell them, it was the same way, really. Because mm-hmm. I I wanted to start playing Tagal Harpa, um, I couldn't find anything around, I didn't know if I could uh, play it, you know, and whatever I could see online, it was pricey because yeah these instruments are pricey and probably someone that want to give a try don't want to spend a large amount of money on a good instrument it's Mm -hmm. normal so i made one and i made two and people start asking me where you got it from can you make one for me can you make one for me and that's how it started Really. I, I understand that completely. I know exactly how that happened. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's that that's a that's a good thing. I think that's always the best way to gain something. But I mean, how do you even know where to start building something like that? It it when you see people who made who the just make one. instruments, yeah, like the the first one I did because I I like a lot learning by experimenting myself and doing things and learning of my errors. I saw a picture and I did something that was like that Mm -hmm. without any plans, without anything. Just uh, obviously made many errors. Well, I could tell you the kind of wood I used, the thickness of the wood, many things. But I made one and then I'd look for plans to how to do it. And I realized, oh, I've done this wrong. I've done this wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all a learning curve. But I think you, we, because you you try to do it yourself before just following plans, you probably learn things at a much quicker rate than if you were just following plans. Because anybody can follow plans to a degree. But when you really try and figure it out yourself without the plans, you kind of, strip everything apart and have to figure it out and, and certainly go through a quicker learning process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to you need to think it. Yeah. And uh, well it wasn't too difficult. I've always been working with wood. Mm-hmm. So my my day job is I work in the countryside for an estate and I do a lot of carpentry and all of those things. So I'm oh, nice. always working with my hands and building things. So that wasn't like a, a big challenge for me. Also because it wasn't great later. But from yeah. that, I started just trying to make them better and better and better. And <laughs> until now, yeah. No, Mateus, think you can make an instrument? If I can build an instrument? Do you think, think you could do it? Yeah. I th- no, I <laughs> the silence <laughs> because I just don't think I could do. I just don't. I, could, could I mean, I, 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 I think it would take some time for me because I mean, I am mostly just a idle scholar, <laughs> but I, I have done things with wood before and other 
um, materials. So uh, I actually I have a carving project uh, from a living room that 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 I'm hoping to get the time to actually do at some point. And when I do, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That's the problem, finding time. <laughs> yeah, time. Exactly. I mean, if you give me a little thin rod of metal, I probably could make a triangle. There you go. That's a start. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> I can figure that one out. Do you know it have to be in tune? Yeah. <laughs> do they have tunes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't make a triangle. In. <laughs> I thought they all just had sound. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's, I don't. that's well, maybe sounds silly, but that's all the thing. When you make an instrument and you want them, just give them that extra little touch you even thickness the wood to a certain tuning mm -hmm. before you glue it. I mean, you uh, shape in a soundboard and you top it with a, another piece of wood and see what note that piece of wood is giving you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. ideally, if your instrument is going to be tuning C or D when you want the soundboard tuning the same one, it doesn't yeah. matter if it's not, but it's kind of giving it that extra extra mm -hmm. bit yeah i couldn't do that i'm gonna be honest no chance no not a clue when i, when I was trying to set the, the studio up, i was watching some videos about like, how to do the uh like the sound foam panels and things and they were talking about i can't remember the word for it is it reverb yeah so it was like talk, reverb like go and clap in the room and see what you can hear and i was just stood in the room clapping and i had no fucking clue what i was listening for <laughs> anybody walking past the window would have thought i was a little bit special because i was just stood there <laughs> clapping and i was i was listening i was really trying to listen but i was just like i can just hear myself clapping i am not i just did not understand what this and he was like you know listen to it bouncing off the walls and then when you put something there it'll sound different i'm like no nah, sounds exactly the same to me no matter what <laughs> By the way, uh, Shan is right now mocking me in the chat for uh, uh, screwing up my chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I mean, at least you didn't cut, cut an arm off or something. At least I didn't. No. Um... <laughs> that's, did, you, that's the... did you use any PPE? Uh, PPE? Personal protective equipment. Yeah, of course. I had earmuffs on and steel toe shoes oh good yeah uh, <laughs> gloves yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> why would i use gloves <laughs> well i don't know it's well, I, i've been using the chainsaw before without ppe and it wasn't the most clever thing to do really it's not the most clever thing to do um i mean at, at least you you want to have like the the more exposed parts uh uh, cover right um i have yeah. some some boots that sort of like basically protect everything up to the knees so so that's that's a good place to start and if you cut your if you cut your leg off above the knee with a chainsaw i kind of call you an idiot for that <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. probably I, dead as well i got yeah. my all my equipment now with the trousers and boots and the stuff but yeah time ago yeah i used to I used to go with a chainsaw to cut trees for firewood without anything. Well, yes, just that's that bold, I would say. <laughs> Steel toe caps, boots, and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> I'd probably just turn up in sliders. <laughs> I mean, I, I also had like a, a you know, with the earmuffs, I, there, there's also a face guard attached. Oh, yeah, the face well. shield. So, yeah, well, you, you, you were the part that's actually yeah. quite important. Mm -hmm. because if some sawdust go to your eyes you close the eyes and you don't know where the, the chain is going <laughs> exactly yeah that's 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 a good point <laughs> i've never used a chainsaw just like i've never been fishing either so what, what kind of viking are you man <laughs> <laughs> i wish i could say i just use an axe but i don't do that either <laughs> so i mean visit one thing i'm interested in is how many people make the instruments that that you make i can't imagine there's many of you out there it's not many but they they're growing and growing really oh really 
it, yeah, it, it's a bigger demand now, obviously, mm -hmm. because it's getting more known. So people is wanting them. And you have people, well, I mean, in the UK, maybe that I know are around four people. Mm -hmm. But it's not a lot, you know, four, no. it's like four people. Yeah, absolutely. It's not, that's not many. I see, because they look so cool as well. I would love something like that, but I would never be able to play it. But I would just, it's something that I would like to buy to have to display because I just think they look really good. And hopefully, someone that could play it would be able to come around one day and serenade me. I don't know. It depends on how good are you at playing instruments. Terrible. To be honest, it's, it's a tricky instrument to begin with, especially for the bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, no, I, th there's no way I'd that that I could do it. Um, I know you said you, you wanted to to play a little bit of, of one of your, your instruments. Yeah, we can do like a little play at the end if you guys are okay with it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I always get get lost when people do that. I just I have it here ready to play in it. So Ooh, okay. Nice. <laughs> I, I assume that's one that you made. Yeah. One of the things about making instruments, I I really cannot see myself playing someone else's instrument. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> there, there, there's a sentence I wasn't expecting to hear today. I, I, I don't know. It's the same with drums. And... Mm -hmm. Do you? Is it mainly just the stringed instruments that you make, or do you do drums? I make, dr as... I make drums as well. Yeah, like frame drums. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna to have to talk after this. I'm gonna to have to pick up some, some bits, because um, the drums are always really the little hand drums are always really cool. Again, I couldn't do anything with it, but I could look at it. Yeah, they are. I mean, you can beat it. It will sound. It will give you. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I could just hear, yeah. but it it would make a nice addition just to uh, sit next to me. I think. Yeah, I, I don't know how my music would be if I wasn't making instruments. Mm -hmm. oh, do you think that, it, it, that you making the instruments has a lot of, um, I guess, inspiration to the music that you make? Yeah, yeah. And also when I'm, when I'm making an instrument, I, I think how it's going to sound, how it's going to be, what I want to play with it. And well, this instrument that I have here with me, is just recently finished and i made it because i wanted to play one song i had in my head with it mm -hmm. oh wow. and, uh, i said yeah i want i want an instrument for this song and that yeah. I, I i i must whenever we have musicians on I, I always must sound like such an idiot because for me music is just something that i it's just above my head i don't I just don't get it. And I, I have such appreciation for people that are musically gifted that I just, I'm almost in awe, especially when, when people say, you know, I, I had a song in my head and I made an instrument to, 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 to be able to play the song. That is, that just sounds insane to me, but I, I'm glad that people exist that can do that. Well, it's, uh, those, those things happen when I'm in my workshop very late. And I might have a smoke and <laughs> start spinning. <laughs> yeah. Well, wherever the inspiration comes from. But, yeah. But I, I, think... I remember I, I, I did a drawing of this instrument one night. I said, yeah, this is the instrument I want for this, this song. And it took me a while until I could start making it because I don't have all the time I, I would like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's ready. I guess as well when you're when you're there making making something you I assume it's very similar to when I um, when I'm carving horns or working on a piece like that that you just get lost in it's almost a form of meditation because you just get lost in the the creative process and I'm gonna you do a lot you've been getting into drawing a lot more and you just become but it's the same it's the same when you yeah. know you're, you're working on some wood or something like that like, yeah 
I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I it's that it. meditative state where you, you're kind of not having to think about anything, even though you, you're working on something you have to pay attention to, you almost become in a flow state where it's, it's, you're on autopilot and then your mind starts to wander to these different ideas. I have all my best ideas when I'm carving the most complex horns I really should be paying attention to. And I assume that's probably very similar to you, obviously, when you're working on a, on an instrument, you then start having all these ideas of songs that you yeah. want to write music yeah, in your head. Yeah. And also, I don't know about well, the horns, but at least wood, the smells of the wood is, is also a big part of, I don't know, kind of transport me somewhere, somewhere else. Oh. Yeah, that, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's not the same for horn, I promise yeah. you, because that fucking stinks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that takes me right out of the meditative state. But with wood, uh, no. each kind of wood smells different, mm -hmm. you know, and it's maybe me that I'm a very strange person, but I sometimes choose the woods I want to use for my instruments for how they smell and how... <laughs> I mean, no, it's it's an organic material, so I think we we have a a connection to it, and on, on some level for for everything like that. And if you're going to be working with it, you I mean you want it to smell nice, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah, but I I mean I connect with the woods. Yeah, some some of them smell bitter, some of them sweet. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. I love cedar for yeah. for my sounds board because it has like a very characteristic smell mm -hmm. and also reminds me to my childhood mm -hmm. when sharpening pencils and and things i don't know it's little things yeah no i, I mean smells transport people back you know you can be walking down the street and smell something and it brings a, a memory back the from 20 years ago it's it's a powerful thing yeah, I think I, me as a person, I pay a lot of attention to those uh, little details, the smells, like certain looks, or the touch, you know, when you touch something and it feels this way in your hands or that way, mm -hmm. kind of very, uh, I don't know, very sensitive, or I don't know how it to describe it. Yeah, I, it's ergonomic, is that the right word? Am I being smart there? Very, like, is ergonomic mean it's just very natural feeling? Uh, is that right? Maybe? I mean, I think ergonomic <laughs> is like safe in a no? way. No, Shan, edit that out, please. <laughs> 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 and Shan just typed in the, the, in the chat, no. <laughs> so I, I think I'm wrong. Forget that. It's not ergonomic. <laughs> But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. It, it just feels good in the hand, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, in a sense, I guess you could say that you're right because, uh, you know, I just looked up the definition of ergonomic and it says relating to or designed for efficiency and comfort in the working environment. So you're not totally off. Yeah. We're, yeah. a, te we're a team. Yeah, Jen just you. needs to stop being a dick. Yeah, we're a team, <laughs> me and you, Matthias. We stick there together. We yeah. <laughs> you got my back. I've got yours. <laughs> so VC, I, I so you said to us before you uh, uh, we 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 began recording, you, you told us that uh, you descend from Eric Bloodax. I, I want to hear more about that. <laughs> oh VC, you that you, was a, a very big joke. <laughs> you, you trolled me earlier. We uh, <laughs> so, to pull to pull the curtains back a little bit, we we tend to put a a Facebook chat together with the guest, me, Matthias, and and the guest have a little chat before about what we're going to talk about on the on the show. And I asked uh, Vizzy about his name, Blood Axe, um, and I asked whether I was I was actually asking Matthias whether there was any saga literature to for Blood Axe, just so we can tie the show together, so we can get a little bit of mythology at the end. And Vizzy uh, said that he was a de descendant of um, <laughs> the of the Blood Axe. And I, I fell for a hook, line, and sink. I was like, oh, yeah, tell me more. What, who? Let's talk. Yeah, let's talk about that on the show. That'll be really interesting. So, actually, actually, I was born in Spain. 
<laughs> you, well, you got me. I went for it. But, but part of me, like, I almost messaged Mateus privately, like, this guy. No, he, he's not being serious, surely. <laughs> uh, but because <laughs> the, the, the other thing is, I think, um, I did, you know, I didn't want to be disrespectful to you, but there are so many people within this community. You see it day in day out. Who say, you know, I'm a descendant of Ragnar oh, yeah, Lothbrok. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a descendant of this, and I'm a descendant of that. You, you actually get these people who genuinely do believe it. So when you said it, I was like. You know, part of me was like, oh, I, I hope he's not being serious. <laughs> Thankfully, you weren't being, but I just, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> no, I wasn't being serious, but I know a few people like that. And normally they're very annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we, I, I, let's just, I want to just say a couple of things about it because it's actually quite interesting. When somebody from, say, for instance, Norway says that they descend from Eric Blood X, there is about a 60% chance that they actually do because of simple statistics. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not impossible. <laughs> well, it's also possible I'm related to Genghis Khan. <laughs> for instance, yes. <laughs> actually, quite, impos quite possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is it, like 13 million people at least that are related yeah. to Genghis Khan? <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> I probably won't say it. I don't know how people would take a joke, but I had a friend that made a very funny joke with Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe... Maybe save it for after. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I will. <laughs> but Mateus, you were going to tell us a little bit about the the real Blood Axe. Yeah, so I mean, Eric Blood Axe um, is the uh, the king who comes after Harold uh, Fairhair, right? Um, he uh, so Harold Fairhair. Um, um, is uh, the, um, um, the the king who's credited with having unified all of Norway, um, and that may or may not be true. Now I'm gonna get like crucified by all Norwegians. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> um, crucified is Christian. I guess so, <laughs> <laughs> but so 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 the thing is actually that that that, that um, uh, Her um, Harold Finehair uh, his uh, his reign is is of course very uh, um, the sources to 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 his time uh, as king are, are are very bad, very poor. We know that he did have some success in creating alliances and, and establishing some kind of coherency along the Norwegian coast, um, but but it was it was more probably more a, a matter of like frail political alliances than than him becoming like a supreme king as as uh, the the history books would project it, and yeah his uh, the 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 guy to inherit that situation was Eric Bloodaxe. And if I don't remember correctly, Eric Bloodaxe also spent a little bit of time being uh, the ruler of York. Uh, so, um, so, so, so he also had, had that on his resume. Um, um, he dies in England after conquering it, as far as I remember. So, 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 so he was a bit of a, um, a cool Viking king. And obviously the blood axe thing, you know, suggests exactly how much of a, a warrior he was as well. Um, I was going to say, do we know where he got, where he got the name from? Uh, I can't remember this. There's a, there is some, uh, there's, there's definitely some legend about that. <laughs> oh, is there? I'm sure, um, but but I I'm I'm bad I'm, I'm bad with it right now for some reason. My my memory is failing me probably because I'm getting older. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's one of the good ones. If if you're getting a a nickname, then that's that's the one you want, right? That's, I mean it's pretty badass. Yeah, it's better than fine hair. 
Oh, he actually, he ruled Northumbria twice. Like he was he first came and then conquered, then got kicked out and then came, came back again. That's hmm. how it went down. So did you say he, he conquered pretty much all of England? No, no, Northumbria. Oh, just Northumbria. Yeah, yeah. With, with like York as the center. Mm -hmm. so that was that was the that was really like it, it was more than anything like northern england that the scandinavians seemed to be going for in general during the viking age like this so, better up here right <laughs> much, much better up here. you don't want to go down south it's too hot down there right they have palm trees in southern england don't they it's, it's too posh and <laughs> well to be honest i live in south england and I don't think it's very cold around here at all. <laughs> it is. It is. It is a lot warmer when you go down south. Me, me being uh, from Spain, being born in Spain. People always think, "Oh, you move to the UK, you're gonna freeze. It's gonna be so cold." Actually, it's way warmer here than in my hometown in Spain. Oh, really? Where I used to live. Yeah up in the mountains in and i mean this weather is very mild mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's more wet but it's very mild <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i don't think i've been cold like in being very very cold here never no i think we we, we spoke about this was it last week how we just don't seem to get snow anymore over here and no. if we do it's it's maybe around easter time it's it's a little bit it's not it's not too but i say it's wet but it's not it's, it's not too yeah. cold people think i'm crazy when i say one of the very few things i miss from spain is the snow <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's true it's actually true yeah <laughs> uh, we don't we don't get enough here anymore it used to be it used to be pretty good at mateus i'm sure you're getting some Probably right now. Oh, yeah, it actually snowed earlier today, but it's already melted away again because the sun is so hot. <laughs> yeah, <lots> so, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's that's that's the weird thing about Colorado um, because we're, we're we're so we're at the same latitude at, uh, as North Africa, like southern Spain, North Africa. So so the sun is actually pretty hot also because the altitude is so high Yeah, mm -hmm. closer to the sun in general. Um, and and then you know it, it can snow in, in the morning and then it melts away again and <laughs> then goes back and forth like that until it, it, all of a sudden winter hits you and then you're just like in in deep snow for a very long I time. <laughs> I think that's similar to what happened where I used to live in Spain. Yeah, it's quite I high in, in altitude, so in the summer the sun burns you a lot, mm -hmm. and in the winter it's really cold. Yeah. I mean, that, I really like it actually. I like this this uh, this um, it's quite these extreme. very extremes. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it stops again too boring. In the same exactly. day, in the same day, you can go from minus ten in the evening to twenty, mm -hmm. and it's crazy. Yep, that is exactly what you know. You will get days like that here in Colorado in January, where it's like twenty degrees plus. And then next week it's going to be minus uh, five or minus ten or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And when is when is the mushroom season in there? The mushroom season is um, because one ones get frozen. Yeah, uh, so the, I'm 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 so bad at that. The the Russians in my department always ask me if I'm like, picking mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at like uh, I I think the mushroom season is is uh, from is it from May or something like that? But I'm not sure. Like I'm I'm really. Okay, so it's more like a spring season. I think so, mm -hmm. but I'm not I'm not I don't trust my word on it. <laughs> yeah. Here here we have it now. It's kind of the. The mushrooms oh yeah of course yeah no yeah it's got to be much later than me i'm uh, i'm i might just be rambling because i'm i don't know much about mushrooms <laughs> <laughs> neither do i i don't I like, like much i don't I like, like mushrooms i like mushrooms this was my way to lead the conversation into how do you think the the mushrooms or hallucinogenic effect affected 
the Viking culture. Ah, okay. <laughs> so I doubt that they were eating the the Amanita uh, mushroom. Um, do you, I do. do you, huh? I do. I you, take you, it. You, I you take, take it, it sometimes, yeah. Okay. Um, so I doubt that they did because originally the the uh, the, the the idea that Vikings were were doing that is is something that comes through a uh, uh, a confusion from um, from from uh, uh, um, Russian uh, ethnologists. Um, looking at what what has been happening in eastern Siberia, and then that has sort of like for some weird reason been trans transposed to Vikings. Um, but um, and this, I, I wasn't it, Dan? Wasn't that um, um, uh, Roderick who uh, who told us about that in the episode about the Bersagir? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, but. Well, when we ask ourselves, like, what kind of like psychotropic mushrooms would Vikings have like easy access to? So the small well, psilocybin, yeah, mushrooms, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. But they... I, I mean, how taking those substances would affect? Because yeah, I imagine some salmons or some kind of pseudo practitioners would take them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and that's th that's, that, that's probably likely, um, definitely. Uh, just like you know, other kinds of like mind altering uh, drugs, drugs or compounds. Like we found a, uh, at least one instance of of uh, marijuana in 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 one person's possession in in a grave in in, in Sweden. We have um, hembane in in other graves. Uh, so they, we know that they, they use something uh, to, to, to change their state of mind, right? And of course, also, I mean, all the literature about uh, alcohol uh, yeah. also points in that direction. So, so this, this, this is a fairly certain thing that they definitely did use mind-altering drugs. But and I think, I think yeah. it was more common than just taking once every now and again. Mm. I think it would be more yeah definitely more common more often especially thinking about uh what you said about the the warriors taking the mushrooms before going to war the first because really if you take just mushrooms without being used to them and used to the effects and go to war it would be your death sentence really yeah <laughs> 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 so yeah i mean if if that was part of of some kind of war ritual then you would definitely need to like train for it <laughs> yeah exactly exactly yeah mm -hmm. i think that should be more common and yeah i think those substances can enhance your abilities with the right training and well the right adaptation from your body mm. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's not impossible. There are some warrior cultures that they've developed from taking drugs. I know the um, that's where we get the word assassin from, isn't it? It's from the Hashashin, which were the Middle Eastern assassins who I'm sure they, they would smoke hash and apparently would give them confidence to be able to uh, go out and assassinate people, I guess. So I know that you certainly, you know, there are groups who have definitely taken some sort of drugs to uh, in some sort of like warlike capacity. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think weed's probably a little bit. I mean, I, I've always found that very strange. Like the because if you smell weed, you don't want to go out and fucking assassinate someone. <laughs> you just want uh, to sit. I just want to sit down. You would, you would, you would be surprised. Uh, I mean, I'm quite a lot into cannabis and I like to learn and well I used to smoke but mm, I was listening to an interview recently that saying that cannabis and other uh, psychotropic substances can only well not only but can accentuate 
your state of mind. So if you feel taking it, your confidence is going to go down and you're going to do everything wrong, you do it. Mm -hmm. But if you take it with confidence, kind of boost your natural performance. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. I so is there, isn't there something about THC actually um, in, in a raw form being like making you a lot more aggressive than, than you would think? Yeah, it's possible because with cannabis, depending on the strain you take, the effects are different. Mm -hmm. And also with the, with the mushrooms. Mm. That's why I think that that thing of take getting high on mushrooms and going to battle is probably not very true, but it would be true taking mushrooms. Well, could be possible that they would take mushrooms to get to certain state of mind. Yeah, and, yeah, and get ready. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just made the mistake of, of trying to Google that and and all I got was a lot of uh, American opinions on weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I, I, I tried a THC gummy and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> I mean, I was not ready for it. I, um, <laughs> yeah, me, me and my friend had one and we yeah I, I always thought when people were like oh yeah it's like time stopped or they feel like I'm gonna die I'm like how can you ever feel like that on weed how fuck me I felt like that I was in my own head thinking maybe I need to tell someone because I'm gonna die <laughs> it was so I don't know how anybody could could, could get into that state and then want to fight because I just yeah. wanted to fucking kill well, up. Do, do you know it's a it's a well it's like a tournament is uh, stone uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. Wow, <laughs> it's very common in in BJJ to uh, smoke a little bit before. I think it's like to help relax and, and see things. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I went into the deep end. <laughs> I yeah, it was uh, it wasn't fun. Put it that way. Well, but my mm, the point of this it wasn't to do apology of the drugs. It was more like uh, in other cultures, like uh, Southern American tribes or North American tribes, they, they use like peyote or ayahuasca. And mm -hmm. it has been quite important in, in maintaining their, their culture and their traditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how it would have been in, in Nordic to mm -hmm. in viking times mm -hmm. yeah no it's a, it's a it's a good question and um i'm i'm sure that it was used uh some some psychotropics were used in 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 rituals uh, um, of various kinds um i i don't know much about whether it was used by by warriors um specifically for going into battle but but I'm sure in, in like uh, various kinds of rituals that take place in, you know, the, the, the warrior's hall when they're sitting there and, and the leader is, is, is going to convince them to go into battle. That's probably where you would see uh, people taking something, right? Because we know, we know that they had these, um, these, uh, these uh, uh, really spectacular uh, rituals where the uh, the chieftain, whatever we want to call him, Earl, Yal, is what they're called in, in Scandinavian, right? They would uh, take on the persona of Odin, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, you know, recite this uh, poetic knowledge um, in, in, in this uh, setting that would be uh, very impressive, I'm sure, for you know a bra uh, of, of, of an Iron Age warrior. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's where I could see these uh, intoxicating compounds being used of various kinds. Of course, just drinking alcohol would be would be a, a primary thing, mm -hmm. but this is probably also where you would find the use of those uh, mushrooms. Yeah, and also 
the alcohol they were taking, it didn't have uh, bubbles like it was mm-hmm. in fizzy, like modern beer. Normally, fizzy drinks don't mix very well with mushrooms. Mm. <laughs> I, I I don't know the the why behind it, but yeah, it's something I've read several times that mm-hmm. if you want to do mushrooms, you need to do with a flat drink. Yeah, the closest they would get to carbonated uh, drinks would be whatever little bubbly uh, leftovers there would be from f- the fermentation, from fermentation process. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mateus, just to go back to you, you talking about kind of in the in the hall before, mm-hmm. I guess before about. I, I don't think you would even necessarily have to have any sort of drug because in that situation, it's easy to get whipped up into into a frenzy. I think anybody who who played in any sports team can has, has probably experienced that or you've, you've seen on TV shows and, and maybe wondered why people act the way they do. But there is something very much about it in a, in a, in a, say in a sports class. You also get it in the, it's, what's, what's the, the Christian church where... A, Which one of them? There's a couple. <laughs> no, but there's the exactly one way where, you, where you tend to get the pastor at the front and it's very loud and it's, it's kind of healing. I've forgotten the... The, 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 which one it is but it's very much kind of that thrives on this idea of whipping people up into a frenzy and everybody in a, in a cult-like scenario and you do act very much differently when I when I, when I played rugby in, in teams I'd get kind of up into a like say up into a frenzy is the best way to describe it and you just get get into it and act almost as a as a hive mind and uh mm-hmm. and just all shout and scream for no reason at all but it's yeah just no i mean if, if you believe in the group right and mm-hmm. that's 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 really what it, it it takes like belief in 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 that particular group that you're that you find yourself in at that moment and then mm-hmm. yeah that can make people do a lot of things Absol- i mean absolutely i mean it also <laughs> boost your confidence as well mm-hmm. oh you're yeah without doubt like you probably like, wouldn't do those things being on your own because you're not mm-hmm. Confidence. It's really hard to hype yourself up on your own yeah. like that. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. Like I said, the only thing, the only thing that I've got um, to compare it to is rugby, which I guess is it's almost a sense of it's not it's not war, but you're going it's two teams opposing, and it's for you know it's a physical thing, and it does just they say it does just kind of whip you up into mm-hmm. something that that you want to go out and and you feel completely different. You you and, and it's insane to say that. There was times when I was playing rugby that I would have um, probably saying I would die is is a bit of a, a stretch, but I would have put myself in serious harm's way, risking you know broken broken bones just just for the team, just to just to win a game, just to get over get over the line, just to get a couple of points on a board that don't really mean anything in the long run. But because you're you're in that scenario, you you're willing to kind of put yourself in these positions where you're gonna get harmed. So you then have to compare that to what it might be when people are going to war and it's only going to be a, a more heightened state of that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably probably like in a one of those ancient battles where mm-hmm. you used to go to war more like a team. Yeah. yeah. Probably, probably not so much like a modern battle where each soldier is so far away from each other and... You, no. you see, you see the same or similar kinds of like co- ideas of community and feelings of community um, that 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 modern soldiers get too. I mean, there's the uh, there's a you can get a very close relationship between uh, people in your um, mm-hmm. what do you call it platoon or detail or whatever unit. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, you become you become brothers because mm-hmm. I guess you're watching out for. You're watching out for each other's lives, and what's more important than that? Yeah, you know, if if that's not your brother, then then who is? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Let's let's wrap this one up because we have um, story time to to record after this with uh, Jonas. I've been waiting, it seems like forever, for this to come back around. <laughs> it's a poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he loves it. He yeah. fucking loves it. He does. Busy. Um, thank you very much for for joining us. Do you do you want to just give a shout out to where people can listen to your music, find you, to follow you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, they can find our music in main platforms. 
Spotify, mm -hmm. YouTube, Apple Music, well, all of those main ones. Mm -hmm. They can search for Say the Blue. I guess they will read it on the description. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, my Instagram, BC Bloodax. Um, yeah. The band Instagram, Say the Blood. <laughs> it's pretty easy. There we go. Nice and easy. Matthias, go on, what about you? Well, you can always find me on Instagram. <laughs> that's really it. <laughs> that's the only place. That's, nice. Uh, that, that's where I uh, I do my things. Nice and easy. Oh, yeah. I I wanted to get your Instagram because I want to ask you to translate some runes for my next tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's on one today. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'll give you a call later. Brilliant. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Um, like we like I mentioned, we're going to be recording the story time episode after this. Uh, so it's a bonus show that you get for supporting us on Patreon, where we go through a different saga. And now we have Jonas Lorenzo on board who does the narration and does a bunch of different voices. It, it's a really good time, honestly. If, if you've been on the edge of deciding whether to support on Patreon, this should really push you over because it's it's a fun time for everyone. And I, I really look forward to doing them. Uh, yeah, so hop over to Patreon, it's forward slash Northern Anthology Podcast and, and check it out. And they say you get a bonus episode each week. So it's either the story time or me and Matthias sitting down and watching an episode of Vikings where you can watch along with us and we'll discuss what we like, don't like or just have a general chat and not even watch the program, which sometimes happens. Mm -hmm. um, Talk about which animals that you will fight. <laughs> <laughs> which animals you think we could beat up, which should be its own solo podcast, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you want to follow the show, it's Not a Mythology Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all the places. Um, also the website, notamythologypodcast.com. And if you like the show, please leave us a five-star rating and a positive review so we can keep making our studios better. There we go. Let's wrap it up. Vizzy, do you want to play us out? Yes, of course. I can do a little song to say goodbye to everyone. There we go. Um, Perfect. I just uh, give a big shout to my bandmates and all the people who have supported me with music and everything. And thank you guys for having me here. Oh, thank, thank you. you for joining us. And I hope it's, it's going to sound decent. Hopefully. Least. Hopefully, I'm sure he will. This song is one of the songs I have written that is not Say the Blood song. So it's something I play as solo. And I believe it's the 58th verse of Hollis Band, the lyric. <laughs>